Hello friends, Jennifer Pearson here, Thistle Gypsy. And uh, I, in my um, infinite curiosity, I have gotten this. It's called the Lewis and Clark Exploring Card Game, or Exploration Card Game. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about where I got this. Um, I got it, and I found it online, looking for another deck that they had, um, this store had, and then I saw that they had all kinds of different, particularly historical and um, natural history decks, all kinds of different themed decks, um, which can be a little bit deceptive, uh, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. Um, but it's called Gettysburg Souvenirs and Gifts, and it's in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Um, so you might want to check them out online uh, if you're ever looking for a deck that no longer exists or if you're looking for a deck like this. This has Dogs of the World. And I will, I'll do a separate walkthrough, but you can see here. I'll just pull them out. You can see it's got a dog on every card face. Now they also have... Um, horses, so I got the horse one, and they have ones that are people, so they have famous women, and it said, you know, an image on every card face, and I thought this was going to be 52 women. No, every ace has Susan B. Anthony, so, and every two has somebody else. So they really gypped you on this stuff. So don't go for the character ones. Um, but, in fact, I thought I got trees also. They have one that's trees. But I got the horses and the dogs. In fact, I'm going to have to check that out. What, did they short me the trees? I was sure I also got the trees. But anyway... And those little decks, these little things are only $6. This, I think, was $12, so still not very much. Um, but the reason I got it was not because I ever expect to play it as a game. I mean, maybe I will <laughs> take it up at Christmas time to my parents, and uh, it will give it a, we'll give it a try. But I got it because of the cards. Um, so this tells you how to play the game. Um, this is a map, should you care to use it, um, of their route. Yeah. So this is the this is the Pacific over here. So there you go. Can I get down to Missouri? I don't know. I don't know with my arrangement. Yes. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're giving you all of this stuff. Um, and then these little colored things have to do with the animals and stuff in the deck, the cards. And the idea with this as a game is that you're going to... Excuse me. All right. The idea with this as a game is that you're going to... Um, try to get five cards in a row that um, are in a row in terms of timeline. They have these stickers for, for whatever. <laughs> stickers. Um, and then here are the cards. And so this is why I got them. And let me also, I'll just run down. They do a nice job. So this is this ends up being like a plant and animal deck. Well, not entirely, because they also have Native Americans. Oh, there it is. I'll show you this. Each card has um, a symbol like this, and so that shows you what all is represented. We have carnivorous animals, uh, coastal Indian tribes, fish, uh, hooved and horned animals, land birds, landmarks, Native American handiwork, um, Plains Indian tribes, plants, Plateau Indian tribes, reptiles, rodents, and water birds. So these are all things that 
Lewis and Clark um, encountered as Europeans, well, I can't say that. Because there were traders out in some of these areas, maybe not all of them, but, you know, the um, part of their expedition was in response to the Hudson Bay Company, I think it was, uh, making such inroads to reach the, the Pacific, and that was a Canadian company. And so they were feeling pressured to get there either at the same time or shortly thereafter. Anyway, so these were things that they cataloged for the U.S. for the first time, is my, my understanding. Um, so I can't say that they're the first Europeans to see them, but they are maybe the first Europeans to have cataloged them, made note of them, because um, I don't know if Clark did, but I know Meriwether Lewis um, kept copious uh, journal notes. Okay. So here we have Bitterroot, and I'm, I'm just going to flip through them, but I'll show you what it says here, and the card backs are very um, uninteresting, but which is a shame. They could have done so much with that, but and it's apparently related to the History Channel in some regard. Um, so for Bitterroot... And, you know, I'm attracted to this kind of deck. For one thing, I've read the journals of Lewis and Clark, the abridged edition. And um, so there's that curiosity. But I've, I have lived a lo in Montana for several years and along that route and have been to some of these places and am familiar with some of these plants. So that's a lot of the charm of this deck for me personally. Um, so, bitter root. As the name implies, the roots of this plant are very bitter, but only when eaten raw. Indians would bake, boil, or powder them for meal. Of the Latin name, Luisia rediviva, rediviva? Rediviva means um, that which lives again. If dug up, dried, and replanted, the plant will often revive itself and grow again. So, how cool is that? You know, as far as a meaning that could be, you know, used for divination. Um, we'll look at another. I, as we come to each change, like this is obviously plants, or flowering plants in particular. Um, monkey flower, yes, prickly pear. So, I'll do this one. This is the bushy-tailed wood rat. And they have the date up here as well. And the date will be fairly narrow. Um, I can't remember how long it took them to go from one side to the other. Uh, it, it was, did it take them a year to get back? I can't remember. At any rate, I assume that these are all things on the way out. Let's see if they've got it in order. Here they've got October 1804 to July, so just about a year, yeah. Okay, bushy-tailed wood rat. Let me read that one. Got a dime? The bushy-tailed wood rat will gladly drop whatever he's carrying for a shiny object. His signature bushy tail is used as a blanket. This species is normally solitary, although a special bond is known to exist between some mothers and daughters who share territories, resources, and even nests. There you go. Uh, porcupine. Prairie dog. I didn't know that there were different kinds of beaver at any rate, a Missouri beaver. So now we're into coastal Indian tribes, the Wakiakam. And again, I will read this one. Um... The same day Clark wrote his famous journal entry, Ocean in View, Oh, the Joy, the Corps met the Wakiakam people. Perhaps it was seeing the distinctly European sailor's uniform on one of these natives that prompted his hopeful, hopeful mistake. It would be many weeks before uh, the Corps saw the ocean. Okay. 
So, um, we'll just do a walk through to the look. Clats up Chinook, Odo, and Missouri. So these are Plains Indian tribes. The other ones were coastal. Uh, Sioux. And they're just showing their dwellings here. Um, Arikara, Hidatsa, and Mandan, Umatilla. These are plateau Indian tribes. So that would be the, I don't know if it would be the Colombian plateau. Anyway, uh, Nez Perce, Walla Walla, Yakima. Alright, so now we're at birds, and we have a whistling swan for water birds, white pelican, Pacific loon, long-billed curlew, black-tailed magpie, and what fun to have a magpie. What does it say about magpie? The magpie impressed the captains with its long tail and beautiful plumage, which can be compared to that of a peacock. Well, I wouldn't say that. Um, four live specimens were sent back to President Jefferson. Of these, one survived the trip, along with a prairie dog, and lived into the following spring, which is not saying too much. <sighs> so yes, they were on a natural history expedition as well. Western Tanager, and I've never even heard of this before, Lewis's Woodpecker. Um, I don't know. The, what is it? Clark's, Clark's Nut. Nutcracker, nut. Yep, nutcracker. Looks a lot like a mockingbird. Pronghorn, so now we're into the hooved animals. Mountain goat, and I love having a mountain goat in a collection of animals. American bison, Audubon's mountain sheep, cutthroat trout, even that's sort of nostalgic for me, even though I'm not a fisher person. Um, starry flounder, Chinook, King Salmon, Candlefish, Coyote, Grizzly Bear. This must be the Predators, yes. American Badger, Oregon Bobcat. Then that's another one. It's like Oregon Bobcat. Are they different there? Pompey's Pillar, Great Falls of the Missouri. It's interesting. They don't, well, these are landmarks here. Now we're getting to the landmarks. Um, since been damned. Uh, Floyd's Bluff. Beaverhead Rock. Uh, Sioux Headdress. So this, these are the handicrafts. Mandan Bull Boat. Clatsup Rain Hat. Buffalo robe. And now we're in the reptiles, I'm assuming. Soft shelled turtle, prairie rattlesnake, bull snake, plains horned, horned toad. And then these cards are what they call extra cards. This is um, Clark's slave who. Um, you know, he didn't free him kind of in goodwill. He gave him his freedom eventually, but I think that York had to really, like, twist his arm, if I'm recalling correctly. If anybody's more historically knowledgeable about this expedition, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Sacagawea. Um, and I feel like they should have had her quote-unquote husband as well. Anyway. William Clark and Meriwether Lewis. There you go. And then a publisher's card. So, yeah. I'm 
I don't know that I, am I excited to have them I'm excited to explore how they might be useful and to look at them and um, to have a deck that looks at the West in this way with a wide variety of different animals some landmarks that were landmarks not only for Lewis and Clark but for native tribes I believe that's the Beaverhead Rock yes that's the, that was a landmark for Sacagawea um, as well as native anyway a very North American deck uh, certainly so there it is the, should anybody else be curious or consider wanting to use this kind of a deck? The Lewis and Clark Exploration, Exploration Card Game. This is by U.S. Game Systems. So if you wanted to bypass that Gettysburg souvenirs and gifts, um, you could certainly do so and go directly to their website. Um, and I will have a separate little walkthrough of the horse deck and the dog deck. Uh, but not the famous women's deck because th that's a bust as far as I'm concerned. It just has, it, it doesn't have enough women in it to make it worthwhile. Uh, if that changes when I take a closer look at it in terms of, like for each woman, they have part of the quote brought to the top. You know, they have information about the woman. But, uh, and then they rotate that up for the different cards. So they have four sets of information, kind of three at the bottom and one at the top, and they just sort of rotate them, like, through every two and through every ace and through, so it's just kind of, I don't know. Anyway, all right, that's it for the, um, what is this? Oh, that's it for the Lewis and Clark Exploration card game. Bye-bye, everybody.